Welcome to Hilarious Helmet History, the show where your cultural historical misconceptions are even sillier than my helmet. And this week I'm wearing a samurai helmet, because we're talking about samurai. Medieval, fanatical, borderline magical Japanese swordsmen. Men who taught the world, and by the world I, I mean Tom Cruise, taught the world the meaning of honor. And, and everything I just said is ridiculous. You can let that go. Samurai were real Japanese warriors. Some were even what you're picturing, but samurai were also pirates, aristocrats, bureaucrats, women, British guys, African guys, and so many more people outside the frame of your samurai mental picture. Also, I should say this. If you watch videos on YouTube, you probably know a little about the history of Japan. Because that video rules. It's really good. So. Let me get super specific about samurai and their place within the history of Japan. Whoa, uh, singing is great. Uh, have you guys tried it? I, I hope, whole crew, we should try it. It's like mouth magic. Anyway, Japan had samurai from the 700 CE to the 1800 CE. That's over 1,000 years. Across that millennium of history and all its social and technological changes, samurai became several totally different things. For one thing, the word samurai roughly translates to one who serves the nobility. Early on, that meant a lot of things. Samurai didn't definitely mean soldier till the early 900s. And those samurai were mercenaries in the private armies of nobles ruled by Japan's emperor. By the late 1100, samurai became more like European knights. Low-ranking nobles sworn to serve high-ranking nobles who served Japan's shogun, a military ruler who technically reported to the emperor, but not really. Along the way, some unemployed samurai became pirates, called wuku, raiding the Asian mainland. Shogun rule fell apart in the mid-1400s, Japan fell into civil war. Samurai fought those civil wars in exchange for more and more political power. And by the 1600s, when the dust settled, samurai had become Japan's ruling families, male and female aristocrats of the samurai class, whether or not they were soldiers. And samurai stayed that way, while also sometimes being soldiers, just for funsies, until Japan's feudal system ended in the 18th 1970s. So that one term, samurai, that we associate with kind of sort of knights, actually describes over a thousand years of knights, soldiers, mercenaries, nobles, pirates, and lady nobles. And if you believe our standard cultural conception of samurai, you believe every samurai on that thousand year timeline followed one rigorous military moral code called Bushido. It's sort of like European chivalry if you want to be sloppy about it, but those thousands of years of samurai were very different from each other. And the samurai soldiers weren't all chivalrous and white knighty all the time. Samurai retreated from battle, betrayed each other, robbed and killed poorer people, and did other things that are characteristic of, uh, let's see, it says here, humans. Actual humans, not made up guys in poems or whatever. That's also why documented cases of samurai committing ritual suicide, also known as seppuku, are rare. Once in a while, Japanese generals and leaders were forced to kill themselves ritually. However, being forced to kill yourself is more of an execution. Meanwhile, regular defeated samurai tended to surrender, be prisoners, quit the military, beg, you know, some form of not bleeding out on purpose. Because again, uh, Humans. Still says humans. So where did we get that concept of samurai being fanatical super soldiers? Well, the biggest influence on modern samurai lore is a writer named Inazo Nitobe. He was born in the ancient medieval year of 1862. Wow, he was younger than Teddy Roosevelt. Anyway, Nitobe became a respected scholar of not history. He studied English literature. He also left Japan, moved to California, and wrote and published his English language book, Bushido, the Soul of Japan, in 1899. In history, samurai fought like soldiers. In Nitobe's book, they fought like higher beings. In history, Japan's government cracked down on a Catholic rebellion by suppressing Christianity throughout their country starting in the 1600s. In Nitobe's book, Japanese samurai and Christian European knights had matching values, right down to the medieval Christian belief that anatomically, the human soul is located in the gut region, and therefore seppuku requires a stab to the tum-tum to get the soul, some guy says. Because in history, people use sources. In Nitobe's book, sources would have slowed down sales. He wanted to write a bestseller, and he did it. Nitobe's Bushido book was so successful, President Theodore Roosevelt bought 60 copies of it for his friends and family. And Nitobe's success meant the Western world's knowledge of Japanese culture took its cues from one guy in California. No, I, I didn't mean that guy. 
Although, although I kind of mean that guy. American pop culture says samurai were Japanese King Arthurs, men from out of time in touch with ancient bravery that let them bring a sword to a gunfight and die a lot. Even though in real life, samurai relied on pole weapons and bows whenever possible, because close sword combat is way more dangerous. Also, Japanese militaries had guns as early as the 1500s. They also had cannons. Yeah, samurai used cannons to defend their fortifications as early in history as the Europeans did, because they liked to win battles. Because, do I, do I have to keep doing the note thing? It says humans on it, you know, you get it. Okay, anyway, I don't wanna bag on the last samurai too hard. Uh, it's got a white savior thing going on, and that ain't great but at least the movie saviors around while introducing people to the Meiji Restoration, a real era of Japanese history that they depict with kinda sorta accuracy, sorta. And while Tom Cruise's character is the actor Tom Cruise, pretty much, there was a real phenomenon of immigrants to Japan becoming important samurai. English sailor William Adams and Dutch sailor Jan Joosten came to Japan, redesigned Japan's navy, and worked their way up to being personal samurai of the shogun. Similar advancement happened for many Koreans, for many French soldiers, and for one African man known to history as Yasuke, who followed missionaries to Japan, stuck around, became a samurai in 1582, and became the personal body bodyguard of Oda Nobunaga, one of the founders of what became modern unified Japan. That real story of an important black samurai is way more interesting than Hollywood's fictional tale where samurai culture teaches a drunk white guy how to detox. And if we get over our collective confusion about what samurai were, we could understand the world better and get awesomer movies made. Because sure, there are excellent samurai movies. Films like Kurosawa's Seven Samurai combine a fictional story with rigorous historical research. But if we don't hook Hollywood with a new real samurai story, and soon, our most recent cinematic samurai will be this angry Japan bot, surrounded by explosions and hot teens, while other angry robots fight angry robot dinosaurs. But, but in a bad way though. Okay, like, I, yeah, robot, dinosaur, explosion, babe, etc. I mean that, but in a bad way. Also, how did Hollywood make that premise hard to watch? Like, I'd buy a ticket to that thought, you know? Oh, well, movies are dead. Read a book. Bye! Thanks for watching Hilarious Helmet History. If you want to click the C in the middle, that lets you subscribe to our channel, and then please click the notification bell to find out when we do new videos. Some of them are about history, some of them are not. I can't really turn my head in this helmet. I can't see where my hands are going. I hope I don't hit anybody. Help.